Finding a cache of letters in your attic isn't only a writer's dream. Isn't it everyone's fantasy to catch a glimpse of some lost romantic world or some secret forbidden place? It was the excitement of eavesdropping on this very private conversation between a prisoner and a young schoolgirl that intrigued me. I grew up in a small town too. I think I understood the kind of trapped feeling that Phyllis would have had, the, the allure of a handsome man paying attention to you, even if he was a prisoner. I like bad boys too. And I live part of my life in a foreign country, so I think I understand the way that a letter can become a lifeline. It took me eight years to research and write The Convict Lover, getting to know Phyllis Halliday and Josie Clarou and the flu-ridden, desperate post-war world that they lived in, and the arbitrary, cruel treatment of men behind bars. But running in and around and through these characters and that time and that place is the notion of freedom. Why did these two people risk so much in order to have the freedom of that private, uncensored conversation? What did they hope to gain? And in the end, what did they lose? It never occurred to me when I was hauling those letters out of my attic in 1987 that that story of those very real people would continue to fascinate readers 30 years later, and that a brilliant playwright like Judith Thompson would write Hothouse, where Phyllis and Daddy Longlegs come to life on the stage in, in an entirely new and wonderful way, and in which she confronts even more directly the wonderful, ruthless, and beloved trickster that we know as freedom.